Our second honoree this evening was someone I was lucky enough to work with, collaborate with, and become friends with, the late Christopher Evan Welch. Chris was quite simply one of the best actors, maybe the best actor I ever worked with. When Chris auditioned for the role of the socially awkward tech billionaire Peter Gregory in my show Silicon Valley, we were all blown away. I knew he had something special. Seeing his performance was the tipping point that gave me the confidence that this show could really be worth making. All of us working on the show couldn't stop re-watching Chris's audition tape. The more you watched him, the more you wanted to watch. People who had seen his audition wanted to know what he was like in person. Was he really like that character? Did he really talk like that? Actors who were familiar with the world of theater in New York, though, told me about what a legend he was up there, known for turning down big roles in favor of parts in avant-garde plays from newer writers. When he, <clears throat> when he flew in from New York to meet me, I wasn't sure what to expect, but I was surprised to find out that he was actually from Texas and that, he, that we had mutual friends going way back. Some people thought that because he was such an incredible actor, he might be difficult or a prima donna. He was not at all. He was a friendly, intelligent, great guy with a wicked sense of humor. He was also a devoted husband and doting father, and of course, an incredible actor. Chris was a true chameleon. On stage and on camera, he could be brilliantly funny, but he could also be terrifying. When his own wife, Emma, who's with us here tonight, saw him play the role of Tom Finley, a psychopath in The Bird of Youth, she thought to herself, should I really be sleeping with this guy? <laughs> His true passion was theater. He preferred what he called the people's theater, downtown theaters, where tickets were $20. But he took on big roles also and received rave reviews. He won an Obie for his breakout performance in Evo Van Hove's 1999 experimental version of A Streetcar Named Desire. On screen, he gave us unforgettable performances in Steven Spielberg's Lincoln, Paul Thomas Anderson's The Master, and Woody Allen's film, Whatever Works. And of course, my favorite role of his, of Chris's, was Peter Gregory in Silicon Valley. One critic called his character a poster boy for the tech world's imperiousness, its brilliance, and its odd alienation from the very world it is forever trying to make a better place. Another said, Chris gave us the perfect embodiment of tech world hubris. My favorite review, though, was not from a critic, but from Netscape founder and real-life tech billionaire, Mark Andreessen. He said simply, I believe it will go down in history as one of the great comedy performances of all time. In the spirit of a true Texan, Chris never compromised. He turned down roles most actors would not. He had huge natural talent, but instead of just getting by on that like many do, he worked hard at his craft. But awards and rave reviews aside, Chris's work speaks for itself. Here are a couple of clips. Are you still enjoying your asparagus, sir? I was never enjoying it. I only eat it for the nutrients. You may take it. Oh, shit. Peter, I don't want to upset you, but Gavin Belson just walked in. Does he see us? I don't know. He, he must know that you're here. If I scurry to the restroom, do you imagine he... Peter, I didn't know you came here. Gavin, hello. Nice to see you. And you as well. How are you? Well. And you? Not bad. I just got back from Jackson Hole. Have you been? I have not. But I hear good things. <clears throat> You look well. Are you exercising? I have begun to do Pilates. Ah. I hear that's good. I like it. Yes. Well, I didn't mean to interrupt. Nice to see you, Peter. Goodbye now. OK. You know, I, I, I almost forgot. 
I, I saw that Pied Piper is in the startup battlefield at TechCrunch Disrupt. It inspired me to call TechCrunch and offer to be their keynote speaker. They were quite accommodating, <laughs> especially when I, I said that I'd make the event the grand unveiling of Nucleus. So I will see you all at the conference. <laughs> This is displeasing. Okay, everybody, let's run it. <clears throat> Everything is more complicated than you think. You only see a tenth of what is true. There are a million little strings attached to every choice you make. You can destroy your life every time you choose. But maybe you won't know for 20 years. And you may never ever trace it to its source. And you only get one chance to play it out. Just try and figure out your own divorce. And they say there is no fate, but there is. It's what you create. And even though the world goes on for eons and eons, you are only here for a fraction of a fraction of a second. Most of your time is spent being dead or not yet born. But while alive, you wait in vain, wasting years for a phone call or a letter or a look from someone or something to make it all right, and it never comes, or it seems to, but it doesn't really. So you spend your time in vague regret or vaguer hope that something good will come along, something to make you feel connected, something to make you feel whole, something to make you feel loved. And the truth is, I feel so angry. The truth is, I feel so fucking sad. And the truth is, I've felt so fucking hurt for so fucking long. And for just as long, I've been pretending I'm okay just to get along. Just for... I don't know why. Maybe because no one wants to hear about my misery. Because they have their own. Well, fuck everybody. Amen. Please welcome the family of Christopher Evan Welch, Emma Roberts Welch, Kathy Berg, and McKenna Marks. This is awesome. Uh, I'm Emma, I'm Chris's wife. This is his sister McKenna and his mother. Kathy, um, my husband would have loved this. He was a very proud Texan. When I first met him, and I'm a New Yorker, and he was a Texan, I was nervous, and so he brought me to Austin so that I would have an easy entry into the scary state of Texas, and I loved it here. Uh, he was raised in Irving and got his start at the University of Dallas on the first ever theater scholarship. And even though he lived uh, with us for many decades out of the great state of Texas, he kept his Texas driver's license, which I know is illegal, <laughs> but he would not let it go. He was a great man. Um, he wore his Stetson in Times Square often, too. He was a great man. He was, um, I really can't say about his work any more better than Mike did. Um, because I'm his wife, and I'm biased, but he was an incredibly passionate actor. This is what he was great at, and he knew it, and he was blessed to have a fantastic, funky career that everyone was envious of. He got to work with great independent filmmakers and still make money for us and living in our modest way in New York City, and his last project was with Mike on Silicon Valley, and. He just felt like he was killing it on an HBO show. He was really psyched about it. He was also, um, 
sorry, an incredibly passionate husband and son and brother and a family man. And we have a four-year-old daughter who is definitely going to be an actress. <laughs> And I told her I was going to go get a trophy for Daddy. So it's going to be awesome to give this to her. And as we continue to tell her, as she grows about the legacy her father left behind, aside from the awesome legacy that is June, this will be a great addition. And thank you so much to the Austin Film Society. We're huge fans. Thanks a lot.